Hey, this is Derek Coble along with Justin Turney. We're glad that you have joined us for our family Bible study on Daniel and the lion's den. You know, it's a classic Bible account. We've all grown up from childhood hearing about Daniel and the lion's den. And I think there's a lot here that we don't study enough as adults. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, in general, we do know the, the basic story of what happens, but we really don't maybe know the in-depth of, of what he went through, what happened, and there is a lot that we can pull out and a lot we can learn from Daniel's story. Yeah, I think especially the way that Daniel must have felt uh, while he was there in Babylonian captivity, that's not something that we often think about. Yeah, no, not at all. And sometimes we, you know, we just don't feel good. Yeah, you know? sure. And sure. Uh, you're tired. There's days you're depressed, maybe upset, uh, worried or sick. And it's at those times, I think it helps us the most to kind of compare our situation to others and especially Bible people. You know, think about how Abraham uh, must have felt when he was told to sacrifice Isaac. Right. We we really almost can't imagine those things. Um, and sometimes it is try to put ourselves in those perspectives. Hard to imagine, but it tries to help us learn when we do those things. Yeah, or what about Joseph? You know, Joseph, when he was put into prison for something he didn't do, Genesis 39, um, what about Paul? Yep. You know, and how he must have felt being beaten and in prison, just preaching the gospel, Acts 16, 17, or even Jesus, right? You know, and I think those are good points. You know, that these people they weren't doing anything wrong, <laughs> and all that was thrown at them, all that was uh, that they had to go through, they weren't doing anything wrong. They were simply praising and worshiping and, and trying to follow after God. Right. So think about how Daniel must have felt. He was just a teenager when he was taken as a captive into the palace of Babylon and separated from his family. So imagine that, being torn away from your homeland, from your family, you, your name has changed, uh, your food is changed, and everything is totally different from what you have known. But the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8 that Daniel purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself even being so far away from his home. So he already had the faith that he needed even at an early age. I'm going to say as a teenager, right? You yeah. think of yeah. him being able to do that at that young age. At the age, I, I can't imagine <laughs> being able to, to have that type of faith at right. that age. We know so what kind of teenager it's you amazing. were. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure you were great. You were great. But, you know, yeah, exactly right. You know, at an early age, and he's, his faith has already started to build. And, and even as time goes on, he faces death uh, from Nebuchadnezzar because the magicians and the astrologers, the sorcerers in the court, they could not interpret the dream that Nebuchadnezzar wanted to, to be interpreted. But Daniel was able to do that. And, and he did that, Daniel 2.28, through the power of God. He said, there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. So his faith already, you're seeing that throughout the book. Right. And when we get to chapter six, which is where we're going to be tonight, um, where Darius the Mede has now taken control of a portion of the kingdom. And again, Daniel's life is going to be at stake, but I think he's an inspiration to us. Um, because God was with him and he knew that. Right. And that absolutely an inspiration. I think that's why, you know, not being able to get together tonight, we're trying to do a, a study that involves all the family. It can be an inspiration to kids, to teenagers, to adults, and for all of us to, to be inspired from. Right. He had more faith, I think, than a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, develop, maybe even their whole uh, right. lifetime. Hebrews 10, 22 talks about having the assurance, uh, a full assurance of faith. Well, Daniel would be that type of man, that full assurance of faith. So he felt those pressures that were upon him. And the question kind of that we're asking tonight is, do we feel like Daniel at times in our lives? And I believe the answer is yes. So go ahead and open your Bibles up to Daniel chapter 6. That's where we're going to be. And we're going to start out in noticing what happens at the beginning of uh, this chapter, we read how Daniel becomes very successful. After Darius takes over, he appoints 120 princes, 
over uh, the kingdom. These are governors or presidents. And over these princes, you've got the three presidents. The first one was Daniel. Now, Daniel was one of an excellent spirit, according to verse 3. His success was not because he had business knowledge, it wasn't political knowledge, but it was just because of his character. He was a man of honesty, a man of integrity, and Darius could see that. So we also want to learn from that and understanding that if we are diligent in working for the Lord, the Bible says you, if you're a man who's diligent in your business, you're going to stand before kings, Proverbs 22, 29. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, Proverbs 11, 3. But because of his integrity, it made those other presidents and princes envy him. You've noticed verse 4 in this chapter as well. The presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So when we live godly lives, sometimes people get jealous. Sometimes they get envious of us. I think about Saul with uh, David. You know, after David killed Goliath, the women, they come out, they're singing, they're dancing, they're meeting Saul. And they say, Saul, you've slain your thousands, but David, his ten thousands, 1 Samuel 18, 7. The Bible says, Saul eyed David from that day forward, verse 9. So he was jealous and envious of the success of David. Even Jesus, Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered him. Uh, and that's when the Jews, they wanted uh, Barabbas to be released, who was a known criminal instead of Jesus. So like David and Jesus, you've got Daniel here, who the Bible says was without fault. They could not make any charge against him because he was so faithful and trustworthy and dependable. They hated the fact that he upheld godly principles. And so they're going to stop at nothing to devise this plan to catch Daniel. And Jesus would say, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. So Daniel became the target of all of those evil arrows, basically, of the wicked. I think about Ephesians 6, 16, that talks about the fiery darts of the wicked. And what do we take to combat those fiery darts? A shield. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. And that's Ephesians 6, 16. So, you know, we realize that we've got to have great faith to be able to stand against all of the wickedness that's around us today. Right. Well, it's interesting that you mention, you know, you mentioned those examples of of David and Jesus and and them being having that envy at them and just all of these examples we have of we need to be ready. We need to be prepared and and have those that armor and that shield ready to to withstand that. Absolutely. Well, back to the text in verse six, we find out his enemies approach the king and they proposed a royal statue. As they come together and they say, we want you to establish, this is verse 7, a royal statute to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. So the king makes this decree and he doesn't realize the motive behind it. And he signs it, not really understanding what they're doing behind the scenes. Well, really, it's all about that envy. Proverbs 27, 4, wrath is cruel, anger is outrageous. But who's able to stand before envy? Well, Daniel. <laughs> in this situation, we know Daniel is able to succeed uh, in spite of the efforts of these enemies. So even though he feels the effects of envy, he doesn't allow that to cause him to not be committed to God. Look at verse 10. When Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went in unto his house, and what does he do? 
He prays. <laughs> his windows are open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneels upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He does not let this affect him. He's still praying exactly the same as he was. He prayed three times a day. You know, that was something that they did uh, in those days, Psalm 55 and verse 17, evening, morning, at noon, I'm going to pray. They prayed toward Jerusalem. Uh, Solomon did that, 1 Kings 8, 27 through 30. Well, he was there in the temple when he prayed, but he spoke about how God's people would do that. They would turn toward the temple uh, to pray. And on his knees, you know, Solomon did that as well, 1 Kings 8, 54. So, when we're troubled in a, a position where we don't know where to turn, what to do, maybe a decision that we have to make, what do we need to do? We need to keep our faith. Yeah, pray. keep our faith and, and, and pray. Make sure that we're going to God in prayer and asking in faith. And that's James 5.16. We pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, knowing that God's ears are open to the righteous. He hears our prayers, 1 Peter 3, 12. I think it's interesting how, you know, Daniel knows that this has taken place and he knows the decree that has been given. Not only does he continue to pray, but he continues to pray where he knows he's, he's going to be seen. Yeah. And to have the faith of, of even that, you take it just that one step further, that he's not doing it in secret. He's still doing it where he knows he's going to be, be seen. And that happened. Yeah, exactly. So the trap is set. And yeah. uh, Daniel takes the bait. Yeah, the trap has been set. It's been sprung. And, you know, he wasn't like a fish who was uh, unsuspectingly grabbing the lure in a stag. Again, Daniel knew the law and continued this in the same manner as he always did. Just as we were saying, he continues to pray where uh, he's going to be seen. He knows he's going to be seen. He didn't change uh, what he always did and try to pray in secret. He continued to obey God in spite of his enemies who reported him to the king. We see in Daniel chapter 6, uh, there verses 12 and 13. They called him an exile instead of um, the first president. You also go back to thinking of Daniel's not really doing anything wrong. This was all a trap. This was all uh, set up. He's, he's right. worshiping. He's praising God. And here they are calling him um, an exile. But they're degrading. The, they're degrading right, him that right. way. And going before the king saying, look at this slave. Mm -hmm. He's not doing what uh, he's supposed to be doing. Absolutely. So show him as, uh, they want to show him as deliberately not regarding the commandment of uh, of the king. By the way, let me say this. You know, he was a teenager at the beginning of the book, but by the time we get here to this point, he's an old man. He's uh, up in his 80s. Yeah. So possibly the estimates say he's about 84 years old. So he's been committed to God for a long time now. Yeah. That's something we need to realize. Yeah, yeah very, very good. Um, King Darius was not pleased with himself. So he, you know, he realizes maybe this was the trap. He's not pleased with himself. And he tried to deliver Daniel, but he was forced to abide uh, by his own decree. You can kind of think of, of an animal caught in a net and, and trying to free himself. He's, he's trying to find a way out of this. Um, but he can't. These men had trapped Daniel and they had trapped uh, Darius. He was in a terrible terrible position facing the fact that Daniel had to be served to the lions for their next meal. It yeah. was the law or love. Yeah. yeah. You know, these are not just docile right. lions. Uh, they've probably been starved for a while. They're ready mm -hmm. uh, to tear into somebody. So this is a, a very difficult position. Right. And you think his pride was not hurt because Daniel went outside the law and prayed to God. He was not displeased because he had his authority challenged. He was upset with himself uh, and the other two presidents. He probably thought, you know, why did I act so quickly 
to pass this kind of law. Uh, he may have thought, why wasn't I a little wiser in this? So he's going back and thinking, man, I should have looked at this. I should have seen what was going on. And now he's asking himself those questions. Yeah. Um, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 20 he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whosoever, whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Um, he looked at the presidents with disgust because at one time they were loyal and honest, but now um, they had tricked him and they had trapped him in this. Yeah, you know, verse 14 is where it emphasizes that when he heard about it, when he heard about what had happened, and that how he's got to put Daniel in that lion's den because this is uh, the law of the Medes and Persians could not be altered. And so this had to happen in his mind. What's he going to do? But notice verse 14, it says he was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. He really didn't want to have to do this. So he did feel for Daniel. So if there was any good thing about Darius, it's that. Right, right. Um, you think about the wicked, those who were, were trying, were, were putting him in that trap. And the wicked are always trying to catch the righteous in violating something. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 32 says, The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Uh, Psalm chapter 35 and verse 21 says, Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen. You know, sometimes... We could or we may feel like Daniel. We may feel trapped because of our own decisions. But if uh, we are like Daniel, we have uh, the faith, we have the confidence of knowing that we have obeyed God. And, you know, when you really read this uh, and you read this, this aspect, we don't get a feeling that Daniel's faith ever wavers, it ever suffers, Um he knows what he's supposed to do. He knows what yeah. he needs to do, and he doesn't let anybody stop him. Yeah, you don't see him fighting this. You mm -hmm. know, if that were you, <laughs> and you're facing the lion's den, you know you've not done anything wrong. If I, it, I, I mean, can't what, imagine. What, what would you do? What would you do? I, I, Honestly, you almost think you're going to try to think of ways out of it. Okay, you know, yeah. how can I get out of, of facing this lion's den? What can I say? What can I do? Uh, right. But... What we see is Daniel just pushes forward, pushes Ultimate strong. Ultimate level of faith. Absolutely. Um, which Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did you mm -hmm. mention them? Nope, I didn't. All right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had already survived yeah. uh, the fiery furnace. Daniel knew that. Right. It seems like Darius may have even heard about right. that. You he know, says. You come down to verse 16 there. Yeah. Give me uh, read verse 16. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 16 this. says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. So that's Darius saying that. Um, right. and, and maybe he, he had, was familiar with Shadrach, Meshach, right. and Abednego. And, and he's thinking, All right, I really don't want to have to do this, mm -hmm. but... I know the power of your God, because this was not Darius's right. God, uh, the God of heaven at this time. You know, they're, they're, the Babylonians are serving false gods, but he's got maybe even more faith than some of us do. That's what I was about to say. That's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. We focus in on, again, we talk about things we can learn from this that we don't always look into. We think of Daniel and his faith, but Darius, I mean, that's a pretty bold statement to say, hey, your God can right. deliver you. Uh, from the lion's den. And like you said, that's a faith some of us uh, may not have. And that's yeah, pretty it's, amazing. It's crazy because he's not pleading with Darius. Daniel's not pleading with Darius. Mm -hmm. um, if he had of Darius might have felt for him enough yeah. to try to alter that law in some way. I don't know. Um, but it, it was a desperate situation but I think what we learn is no matter how desperate things get in our lives, no matter how trapped we feel, God is still there. And he is always providing for us. He's our refuge and our fortress, right. Psalm 91 and verse 2. And I think we need to mention, though, when those times happen, when uh, we may be in, you know, kind of in the, in the ditch and, and feel trapped, is it's not always easy to have that faith and, and right. to keep that faith. You know, when we read this, sometimes it, it, it seems like it was easy for Daniel. Like we said, we don't see him really yeah. wavering, but it yeah, can he, be hard. It's he not, had to have felt right, something. Right, and that's, I mean, what, and that's what we started out saying. You know, how, how did he really feel? Right. Um, you know, what 
he's human. Exactly. So he had to have some of the same feelings that we have yeah. and some of the apprehensions exactly. um, as well. So it's not always a an easy thing to do, but if we can continue to have that faith, even when it's when it's um, you know difficult. You know, that's what, what Paul said. He fought the fight. That was, it yep. was difficult. It was hard. And that's the same thing we've got to do. Yep. First Timothy six twelve, uh, for sure. We, we keep on fighting. So let's keep reading here and let's see how this thing ends because, uh, it's an exciting, uh, conclusion here to what is going on in uh, this biblical account. Uh, Darius is worried, you know, uh, he, he spends all night restless. He's fasting. He doesn't want any music playing. He can't sleep. Uh, he, he just can't wait for the morning to come so that he can go to the lion's den and check on Daniel and see if what he said back in verse 16 is true. I was about to say, you can even say, look what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to go and check, which still shows he's, he's keeping that, his faith that says, hey, God can deliver him from this. Yeah, so he gets up, verse 19, very early in the morning. And went in haste unto the den of lions. When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Read verse 21. Verse 21 says, Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. 22. My God has set his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him in innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So Darius is there and he hears the voice of Daniel. Daniel answers respectfully even after everything that had happened to him. And Romans 12, 14 talks about blessing those who persecute you. And again, not an easy thing to do, uh, but God's with him. He's delivered him. He says, an angel has shut the lion's mouths. And uh, verse 23, the king was exceeding glad and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Why? Because he believed in his God. There you go. That is the key to this whole thing. There's relief there, uh, not only on Darius's part, but on Daniel's part. He, he's believing in God, trusting in him throughout this entire situation. And uh, that brought joy and relief. That hope that we have uh, does the same thing. Proverbs 13, 12. And we think about 1 Timothy 4, 10, where we labor and suffer reproach. Paul says, because we trust in the living God, who's the savior of all men, especially those that believe. Uh, John 3.36 is good. Uh, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. But what does the last part of that say? He that obeyeth not the Son shall not see eternal life. That's right. And that's the American Standard uh, Version where it says you, you got to obey. And that's what Daniel did. You know, here he is. No manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God and he obeyed him. We can add that. Trust and obey. We sing that song and uh, rightfully so because that's what we have to do. So God has a way of getting the final say. You know, read what happens here in verse 24. Verse 24 says, And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. So the men and their families are thrown into the den of lions. And, you know, things have a tendency, what goes around comes around, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like yeah. that saying. And uh, you see that in Esther with Haman being hung on the gallows that he built for Mordecai, Esther 710. Uh, Psalm 7, 14 through 16, the, the end of that says his mischief shall return upon his own head. And that's if, if you dig a pit for somebody, it says, then you're going to fall into it. So <clears throat> that's the same idea, that violent dealing shall come down upon your own head, your own crown. So Darius makes a decree at the end of this 
that all men should tremble before God. So here he is, verses 25 through 27. He wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree, he says, that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. So Daniel prospers and there's relief of his enemies there. You know, he's walked by faith this whole time. Absolutely. Second Corinthians 5, 7. He's pure. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart. Matthew 5, 8. Same for us. And, and, and the... Uh, the way that Darius, yeah. you know, we see his character changing throughout this as well. Right, right. And I think that was even one of my favorite things that I take from this <clears throat> is is looking into him a little more and uh, seeing that faith that he he, he already had in, in God. But even after, you know, putting God and in, in saying, hey, everybody's going to follow, right. follow God. And, right. Now, and did he ever convert? Did he become a proselyte? Right. You know, we don't know. Right. Um, but it is interesting that he says, hey, he's the living God. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many people we wish would say the same thing today, that I'm going to obey everything right. that the God of heaven commands. Right. But as we end this, I want us to look real quick at um, things that Daniel did that we can add to our lives or his character uh, that we want to see as well. Uh, just quickly go back to the beginning of chapter 6 down to verse 3 and notice this quality of Daniel. Uh, it says he had an excellent spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, that is something we're striving for to have an excellent spirit. Verse 4 says they found none occasion nor fault. So here's a man without he was blameless we might say so nothing outstanding that they could hold on to he's faithful and you know people who were trying to find something against you they were probably really looking yeah yeah <laughs> they saying, were can yeah. i find we want to find something against him and still couldn't find right anything. and they did i mean we read about how uh, they couldn't find mm -hmm. anything um and that's why they had to make this up right uh, this whole decree so he is faithful uh, that's what we want to be all the way unto the end of our lives, Revelation 2.10. Then if you move down to verse 10, that's where we find him praying. Mm -hmm. And so he's a man that's committed to prayer and dedicated to God in every single way. And I think those are some important points that we need to see. Even through the adversity. Even through adversity. So, yeah, very huge challenges in yep. his life that uh, facing death, you know, more than once right. is not uh, something that most of us are, are going to Yeah, it's, have again, to face. something that we can't necessarily imagine. And, you know, it's one thing to be able to go back and look at these and say, look, they were facing death. You know, the, the challenges we face generally aren't even close to that so right. if they are able to keep Daniel's able to keep his faith and others like him are able to keep their faith facing death then you know we should be able to to hold on to ours exactly because we're not facing anything like right. that right now so we appreciate you joining us uh, for this family Bible study. We hope that you've enjoyed it. I know I have. Absolutely. So it's been a very good study uh, throughout uh, this chapter, uh, looking at Daniel and the lion's den and uh, the, the great faith and the wonderful examples that we've learned uh, from this book. You got anything you want to add? Oh, I think that was good. <laughs> All right. <laughs>